Good morning, gang, or whatever time of day it is for you when you're watching this. Welcome to my channel if you've never been here before. Welcome back if you have, and I am so glad that you have found this video. This is the most requested video that I have had since starting this channel over a year ago. I know there's about 125 videos currently, but here it is finally. So I am, as many of you know, a health and weight loss expert, and I've been doing that for about a decade. That's not to brag, but it is a good way to explain that I get asked to do public speaking gigs around the local cities in my area. I have a signature talk. It is about giving you all of the mind-blowing and highly unknown info about how to reach your health, wellness, and especially weight loss goals. And a lot of these things haven't been heard about. A lot of them are so easy to implement into your life. A lot of these things will be the holy grail that you have been looking for to reach all of your health, wellness, and weight loss goals. So in the spirit of wanting you all to have absolute success in those areas like I have, here is the most popular talk. Now this is a good one to watch because it is the signature talk that I do. Usually this talk is an hour and a half. This video, I have crammed all of the best info from that talk into 30 minutes that I shared at a recent event locally and I am absolutely delighted to share it with you. So sit back, relax, open your mind and get ready for some secrets. Kelly. So Kelly, she is an advanced holistic health practitioner. Today she's going to be speaking about reaching your optimal health. Come on up here, Kelly. Hey, gang. Okay, it's hard to follow all of those brilliant people. Thank you to all of you. That was incredible. So they call me a holistic health expert. That is a glorified term for a giant three-year-old. <laughs> By that, I just mean I always ask why. Myself, I come from emergency health services, but growing up, I had eczema and psoriasis and inflammation, panic, anxiety, acne, excess weight, water retention, irritable bowel syndrome, did I say that one? I don't know, a whole bunch of things that everyone just thinks, oh, these are normal and this is just what you deal with and you're a victim of your body and we're just gonna placate that. I'm way more stubborn than that. And so I started going down the rabbit hole of holistic health. And really that just means characterizing all parts of something as a whole unit. Rather than looking at little bits and pieces and treating symptoms, we're gonna treat everything like an entire engine. So one thing led to another and everywhere I searched, there was a place that talked about nutrition and somewhere that talked about movement and I kept asking why. Oh, that's inflammatory. Okay, why? What's happening? How is this happening? What is it doing to the rest of the body and how? And so over eight more years of intense study, I ended up discovering that it's really six foundational principles of optimal health that need to be balanced at a minimum 80-20. 80% optimally, 20% treating ourselves. And with that, it is mind-blowing what we can heal, what we no longer have to deal with. And I started realizing that there is no one-size-fits-all approach. It doesn't matter what ails you, no one-size-fits-all. There's something called biochemical individuality. Another giant term that just means we're all different. We're all so, so different. And you see all these stupid things like the blood type diet and the body type diet, and I just, no. Because even if we both have the same blood type, we are so different physiologically with what's happening on the inside. I wasn't ever planning on going into holistic health as a career, ever. But I started really devoting all of my time to this and it was taking up my entire life. Didn't matter to me, it was my passion. And I started helping people, anyone that I knew. I started with people telling me they couldn't lose weight, weight loss is a problem. Okay, so let's look at you as an individual. And I started helping each and every person succeed at their goals. And I thought, okay, it works for weight loss, let's try autoimmune diseases fibromyalgia, MS, diabetes type 2, things like that. And sure enough, these people were healing time and time and time again, and not one person was still struggling. And I thought, okay, I need to put more time into this and help more people. And so this is my life. It is my absolute joy. If you can't write anything down, I have a YouTube channel where you can see everything for free because that is that's my jam. I just want to help everyone. So I'm going to give you all of the best tips that I have for each six principle in your own life so that you are empowered. The YouTube channel is called Kick It With Kelly. Kick it meaning kick your habits, kick it to hang out. I am a very fun person because I really believe that everything has to be a good time. None of this is like, oh. We have to eat only salad forever. 
Dukes of Hazard came out with Jessica Simpson. Do we remember this movie? I do. Because I was like, I'm gonna look like that. Might not seem like a huge stretch, but it was at the time. And I thought, did I care about all my eczema and my psoriasis? Not as much as I wanted to look like Jessica Simpson. <laughs> So I did it the whole wrong way. I spent years and years doing it the wrong way. I developed an eating disorder that I had to go to a hospital program for. I've never said that on a mic in front of all these people, but I did. I looked incredible. You could have put me next to Jessica Simpson. I'd like to say you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. I felt the worst I have ever felt in my life. Anxiety and panic through the roof. All kinds of new symptoms I didn't know about. It was the worst. So I gained a whole ton of weight back, ended up really depressed, and then I started doing it the right way. Do you know how easy it was? It was incredibly easy. Now, like most of us, we can eat whatever we want, look fine, but there are secrets and there are tricks on how to hack your own body. So that's what I'm here to share with you. There are three things that take energy and life force away from us. Sucks us dry a bit. Thinking, breathing, and moving. How many people think, breathe, and move every day, all day? The only three things to give us back life force energy, sleep, nutrition, hydration. That's it. So think about the amount of people thinking, breathing, and moving versus the amount of people that have adequate sleep, nutrition, and hydration. It becomes quite clear how we all have challenges. We have on average 70,000 thoughts per day. Our brains are taking in 11 million bits of information per second. The reason why we feel so victim to that is because our minds will run the show if we let them. We don't have to let them. You control your mind. You are the boss of your mind. And if you don't stand up and take that control, it will bulldoze you every single time. Where this gets interesting is cellular biology. All of our brain cells have a whole bunch of cells. All kinds, thousands of receptor sites coming off each cell. Each one of these specific to one emotion. There's one for anger, one for embarrassment, one for joy, one for sadness, it doesn't matter. There is one for every emotion. Where this gets interesting is when the cells divide. All of our cells are dividing and changing. This now becomes two. Whatever we were bombarding this one with, say we were angry, we're more angry than not, all of these, angry. These two now have more receptors for anger on them. Unfair disadvantage. It takes two months for that to start changing. So you could work on your positive thoughts in about a week and you're gonna be like, Nothing's changing. I'm still negative. It's so much work. I have to think about and monitor every single thought going on in my head. Yeah, but in two months, that will start changing. And you're going to wake up one day and you're going to go, I feel happy. That's weird. <laughs> the funniest thing I think is when people think it's weird to feel happy. What? But it's true. So anyways, it starts in the thoughts. People always think digestion starts in your mouth. Nope. As soon as you think about eating, your digestion starts its processes. Amazing. I could talk all day, but we're gonna move on. I just wanna talk about the thoughts. Your body is so much smarter than you give it credit for. If I could get a volunteer that doesn't know me. No. Thank you. Okay, so just stand beside me. I promise I won't embarrass you, I promise. So I'm just gonna show you a little lie detector test. We don't know each other. I don't even know your name. You probably know mine, but we don't know each other. So put your left arm just straight out. I'm gonna ask you to tell me your real name and your real age, don't lie. And I'm gonna put pressure down on your arm and just resist that. So what is your name and your age? Uh, Joyce Olson, I'm 40. Resist? I'm putting a lot of pressure. Okay, now I want you to lie to me and tell me a totally fake age and a fake name. Caught candy, I'm 20. <laughs> to your body it is smarter than you just a little little tidbit there we're gonna move into breathing so thinking next is breathing something interesting about breath that we don't know we all have cerebral spinal fluid this fluid surrounds our brain and our spinal cord this fluid carries waste away it also carries information the only pumping mechanism in the entire body for your cerebral spinal fluid is a deep belly breath the only pump in the whole body do you know how many people walk around chest breathing all day it's crazy and we aren't to blame it is our western lifestyle the stress lifestyle if you're breathing into your neck and shoulder muscles a lot of my clients i'll watch them they don't know that i'm doing this secrets but I look at their neck and shoulder muscles. Are they moving as they're breathing? Because if they are, they are hardwired into the sympathetic fight or flight stress response nervous system. So that means they are in a chronic stress response no matter what is going on. 
We can all change this. So don't change anything about your breath, but put your hands, sit up and put your hands on your back ribs. Your lower back ribs are supposed to expand with your breath. It's as if your torso is a soup can, expanding in all directions. You probably can't feel them moving. They get seized up on all of us in this day and age as we drive through traffic, as we watch the news. Did you know if you're watching the news when you're eating, your digestion is turned off? Handy little tidbit. Now mindfully, think about your ribs expanding with your breath. Just think about it in your mind. You should feel them start moving. We have control over our bodies. Breathe into the belly. Okay, you can remove your hands now. Just think about that in the future every time. You know, I always tell my clients, if you're standing in line at the grocery store, do it. If you're in the car, think about it, do that. Breathe into your belly. You are giving your body such a gift of renewal every time you take a belly breath. I'm gonna do another little exercise with you with my little timer. I'm gonna tell you when to start, and I don't need to change anything with your breathing, but I want you to just start counting your breaths. It's gonna feel like one eternally long minute, but it's only one minute, and go, and stop. So the average amount of breaths for women should be 12 to 14 per minute. The average amount of breaths per men, 13 per minute. That's normal. So if you're breathing less than that, congratulations. You're nice and relaxed and chill. If you're breathing more than that, calm down. <laughs> Relax. It's just a good way to go. So now take one of your fingers and both. Well, take two fingers. Good thing we have so many to choose from. Put one on each nostril. Unplug one nostril. Take a deep breath in. Look it up. Breathe out through the other nostril. Now you're gonna breathe in through that one you just uncovered. Plug it, breathe out through the opposite. You're always gonna breathe in through the one that you just exhaled out of. Keep doing that for just, just a minute. Right now you are harmonizing your right and left brain hemispheres. You are switching your body from stress, fight or flight into parasympathetic, which is rest, repair, elimination, digestion, metabolization. Okay, you can stop. <laughs> It still works when you think about it. You can just use the thought of which nostril and you're still activating all of those wonderful relaxation things. Also, it's how you get high without drugs. <laughs> Nobody needs drugs. We can just plug our nostrils and you can be on the bus and just do it in your head. Nobody will know. Okay, that covers thinking and breathing. We're gonna go into movement. I love the look on my clients' faces when I tell them to stop exercising. I need to lose weight. Cool, stop exercising. What? They wanna leave, they wanna just run. <laughs> Luckily they don't because they believe me. There is such thing as balance and working in with working out. The more you work out without balancing the repair, the more you're gonna gain unwanted weight. The more you're gonna degrade the cells of your body. We're not built as machines, we are not robots. People always say, like, why, why would you think, this is rhetorical, you don't have to actually answer me, but why do you think as human beings we have to eat and we poop? A lot of people say, well, to give us energy. Food is where we get energy, it is, but that's like a car or a robot. You put gasoline in it, it's gonna go. We're not, we're way more complicated than that. When we're eating, we are replacing every single cell of our bodies with what we put into our mouths. I eat chocolate cake, I eat pasta, it was delicious. I eat everything, I eat bread, but I make sure that that is in the 20%. So chi, we've all heard of chi, life force energy, prana. Yeah, yeah, okay, a yogi on a mountain, but no, it's an actual thing. Chi is life force energy. As you breathe in, your lungs take oxygen and attach it to iron particles in your red blood cells. Then your heart pumps those blood cells all over your body. The oxygen and iron together is the positive end of a magnet. It's a positive charge. Every time those blood cells meet liquid, which is more than 80% of us is water, that is the negative pull of a magnet and there's a charge of energy there. That is life force energy. If you look up at a clear blue sky in the summertime, no clouds there, look up, you'll see tiny white and black flecks flittering about. That, you are looking at life force energy with your bare eyes. It's pretty cool. When you walk barefoot on the ground, biophysics has shown that free electrons come up through the ground into your skin. These are the most powerful antioxidants known to man. Blueberries are antioxidants. We've all heard of antioxidants. What antioxidants are, are they are little warriors that go into your body and scavenge and neutralize any damaged cells. Obviously things like cancer, other ailments are caused by damaged cells. So one of the best things you can do is just get your bare feet on the ground or your hands in the garden. Go lie on the grass on your back. You're doing more for your health than you could ever realize. If you are working out and you want to keep working out, that's awesome, but change your workout routine once every four weeks and you'll avoid plateau. 
plateaus. If you took a marathon runner and put them on a cardio machine, a treadmill, elliptical, whatever, it's on a machine, neurologically, the mind understands that you're moving forward in space, but the ground's not moving weird in the brain and so it sends a backwards muscle recruitment pattern so I've had people training for marathons coming to me saying I don't know what happened I tried to run the marathon I couldn't do it I trained forever and I was awesome in the gym really on a treadmill I don't think your brain's gonna take that the same way when you go outside. When you're sitting on a machine at the gym, I only use machines for rehab purposes or for beginners. Neurologically, your brain knows that you're bolted to the ground via the machine and it shuts off your internal core stabilizer muscles. You see these big guys going around the gym with their weight belts? That's because their internal core structure won't work anymore. I don't know who's in the gym or whatever, but handy. Stretching. Stretching is like tuning a guitar or a piano. Every organ that we have shares the same frequency with muscles along that meridian in the body. Basically, you need to be able to stretch properly and balance the whole body. You see marathon runners, for example, are sprinting on TV, and they're stretching out before the race, and they run a quarter mile, and their hamstring snaps, and they fall. That's because your nervous system keeps record of how long and short all of your muscles are. So as you're stretching out, stretch before bedtime, you'll be contacting the nervous system, which is what you want, rather than the muscle itself. So the brain goes, oh wait, the hamstring's not that long, it's only this long, and it pulls it back short. So always stretch before bed. Try to stretch all of the muscles in your body. Sciatica, it's a handy thing to know. There's so many people that have sciatica. I have not seen one person stay having sciatica once they fix the food intolerances in the gut that they might not even know they have. Sciatica stems from inflammation in the colon, the large intestine, because it shares the same nerve distribution pattern. Just a tip, because there's so many people that have sciatica, or at least everyone in here knows somebody that does. Mm -hmm. Sleep. Sleep is something that, again, we always think that we can override, and we can, but not without cost. The appropriate time for sleeping is between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. This is because between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. in North America, we're getting all of the physical repair that the body needs. Between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m., we're getting all of the mental and emotional repair that our bodies need. If you don't sleep within those hours, you are getting rest. You are not getting the same repair. It is not possible. You know that 3 p.m. brick wall that we always hear about? And it's like, oh, Folgers commercial, 3 p.m. coffee time. It's probably the worst thing that you could do. <laughs> you don't need coffee. We all have a natural hormonal dip at 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. That hormonal dip is how we can get that repair back if we're not sleeping at night. So a great hack is to nap at 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. if you can, but only for 20 minutes. Some people say to me, yeah, but I can't even fall asleep after 20 minutes. That's okay. As long as you're lying there with your eyes closed, you are getting repair. If you go longer than 20 minutes, your body thinks, oh, okay, so we're hibernating. And then it won't wake up for a couple hours, and when you do, you're one cranky. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Happens to me every time. Okay, it should be dark in your room. If you can see the outline of the furniture at nighttime, it's too bright. People wear eye masks. Yeah, that helps you sleep, but your skin has photon light receptors inside of it. And if your skin perceives light of any kind, even artificial, during the sleep hours, it's gonna send out cortisol, which is the stress hormone, but it's also the wake up hormone. We do need cortisol, it is helpful to have cortisol, it wakes us up. But we don't want the body to be sending out cortisol when we're trying to sleep. And I do have a lot of clients that work nights. Obviously in this day and age, it's kind of impractical to go to sleep at 10 and wake up at six. You're sitting there by yourself when you wake up until the rest of the world gets up. If you do have a night shift, the best thing to do is ask someone for a 21 day cycle. If you have a 21 day pattern, the body somehow just thinks it's okay. Okay, if you stay up too late, you will store fat. People who average six hours of sleep per night are 27% carrying more fat cells than those who sleep seven to nine hours. Those averaging five hours of sleep per night, it jumps to 73% more fat cells. Best to get some sleep. If you really aren't getting enough repair to counteract the energy expenditure, it starts showing you symptoms. Low energy, emotional instability, general health issues, watch for loss of creativity. If you're a creative person and you just don't have the mojo, you need some rest. When this starts affecting the hormonal system is where challenges take place, actual health challenges. Patient anxiety, elevated heart rate, respiratory rate, poor sleep quality, night sweats, orgasm inhibition, that sucks. Waking unrested, nervousness, jitters, tired but wired, excess muscle tension, and the list goes on. I sound like an infomercial. Here's a depression pill. You're gonna be really happy, but you're gonna poop yourself all day. <laughs> like, <laughs> moving into nutrition. Once again, there are expanded videos of all of this info on my channel. 
Just check it out. Organic food is expensive. I understand this. I am one person. My grocery bill is that of like a family of four, but I eat a lot. So that could be my two. But anyway, if you're eating organic food, you are giving yourself life force energy. If you're eating things that are not organic, it costs us life force energy to process that food. That's so not fair. Although it is expensive, if you're eating all organic, you actually need 30 to 60% less food to be satiated, to be satisfied. Make sure that your meat is organic. If you really are on a budget, there's a list on Google. Check it out. Dirty Dozen Clean 15. That's for produce. That lets you know which produce you can get away with not organic. I still suggest organic, but if your meat is not healthy, fat stores toxins in animals as well as humans. If you are eating meat that's been treated with antibiotics, hormones, steroids, your body's creating more fat cells to hold those toxins. So you really wanna be watching out. Try to try, try, try. I have a hack for that too, because organic meat is probably the most expensive thing you could ever buy. You need to trade your firstborn child for that. Go to the store, look at the date on the meat. Come back to the store the day before it says the best before date. Show it to whoever. It'll probably already be marked down and it'll cost you 30% less than the conventional meat to purchase it then. Then you either cook it all up or you freeze it. Mm -hmm. There's a whole video on that topic. <laughs> all right, so the biggest, biggest things to avoid are what I call the four white devils. Pasteurized dairy, table salt, sea salt is okay, white flour, and refined sugar. Rule of thirds, take your hand, make it straight, put your thumb there, put your thumb under your chin. Your pointer finger should come to the base of your nose. It maybe won't, mine does not. Now take your thumb, put it at the base of your nose. Your pointer finger should touch just between your eyes. Mine was a little too high. Now take your thumb, put it between your eyes. Your pointer finger should touch your hairline. If anyone has that perfect, I would be shocked. So great expeditions were done into tribal peoples in the 40s all over the globe who had the most perfect teeth, the most perfect bone structure, the most perfect sinus cavities you've ever seen. So a very unfair archeologist thought, cool, let's introduce the Western diet. Let's give them all those four things I said to avoid. One generation down, the next children that came messed up teeth, or sinus cavities that weren't properly formed. You know, it's just <sighs> hydration. Drink half your body weight in filtered water per day of ounces of water. So if I'm 120 pounds, I'm drinking a minimum of 60 ounces of filtered water per day. If there's a 300 pound bodybuilder standing next to me, how does it make sense that we both drink four liters of water per day? Someone's gonna pee too much and someone's gonna be really thirsty. It just doesn't make sense. So the rule of thumb, if you listen to your body, you'll know the right amount of water, but the rule of thumb is half your body weight in ounces of filtered water per day. The best solution for pollution is dilution, including in the body. Another handy fact is if you wake up and you reach for coffee first thing without drinking water, it's gonna gross you all out. Your body will go down to your colon and squeeze the waste in your colon and use that liquid to hydrate you with because it believes that you're dying. I know I said the body was smart, but it's kind of dumb when it comes to still thinking we're living 10,000 years ago. So yeah, just drink water first thing in the morning and you'll feel a lot better <laughs> overall. Okay, one more thing, and not the fillings, metal fillings in your mouth. I always tell people this. There was a woman and she had two years left to live in a wheelchair with MS. You know, I don't believe half of the causes of MS that I hear about because I have seen way too many cases reverse themselves with proper diagnosis. This woman had a mouth full of metal fillings. If you bite down on one metal filling one time, environmentalists would have to shut down a two acre pond because of the toxicity. This woman, was so toxic from chewing, from speaking, from anything, because she had so much metal. She went through a six months metal detox that was done properly. You have to be careful with metal detoxes. Please don't try to just do it yourself because it's not gonna feel good. But anyway, now she's fine, she's walked around, she's fine. It was not a mess. So if you have metal fillings, I went through this myself. I had either four or six and it sucked. And it was so expensive. But you know what? After about a month, when my mouth was back to normal, I've never felt better. It's so unbelievably worth the cost. And cavities can heal themselves. You can get rid of your cavities because here's how cavities are caused. You can brush your teeth 500 times a day. You're not gonna affect the cavity level in your mouth. Your teeth, if you look at them under a microscope, they're covered in holes. They are sponges, little tubules that go through into the teeth. Your lymphatic system is pushing fluid out of these holes constantly to cleanse the body, to give you saliva to break the food down. 
It's supposed to be coming out. Anytime you have processed food containing white sugar or white sugar in any form, we all know how hidden it is in a lot of things. Somehow, and this is still a mystery to me, but I will ask why until I figure it out, <laughs> your body switches that backwards and your teeth start sucking in. And this is what causes cavities. It is sugar. So that's just an interesting thing that people don't really know. Please, please, please only have caffeine before noon. If you have caffeine after noon, especially as women, men are pickup trucks, women are Ferraris. That is not to be offensive to any male. <laughs> We're kind of unlucky. Yeah, we look beautiful, but mm, I'm talking about hormonally. A man can ingest things that are maybe worse for us than good things and he'll, his body will keep on trucking. A woman's body, we're so finely tuned, we eat one thing and we're all out of whack. So caffeine, not our friend. Every woman that comes to me to fix her cellulite, come off caffeine. She's like, <laughs> now I have kids, I work, cool. Well then enjoy your cellulite. <laughs> Cellulite has a few different causes, but that is the leading cause of cellulite is caffeine. But one more thing, microwaves. Please don't use a microwave. Last tip I have for you, don't use a microwave. It's not radiation we need to worry about. Yeah, there was articles put out by the Mayo Clinic that there's not enough radiation in a microwave to harm you. Really, I wouldn't care about the radiation. It's how the microwave is heating the food. What it does is it takes the liquid molecules in the food, even one chicken breast is full of liquid, much like our bodies, and it oscillates the water molecules or the liquid molecules in that food at such a high rate that it explodes loads them on a molecular level, the body no longer recognizes that as a food substance. And so as we eat it, the body's like, what is that? That's obviously an invading factor. So your body is to try to attack the food that you just ate from the microwave. You don't feel a thing. You're like, sweet, it's warm, it's cool. Joint pain, I have healed enough joint pain. Oh my goodness, just by taking away the microwave. Because all of those androgens get stuck in the capillaries in your joints. And morning joint pain, if you ever hear someone say, I have joint pain in the morning, but then I'm fine later on, it's microwave. Thank you. <laughs>I really sincerely hope that you learned a few things that blew your mind today that maybe you didn't know about before. I hope that any info that you heard today is going to help you reach your health, wellness, and weight loss goals. If you have any questions at all, I am compiling questions for a future Q&A video that I'll be posting soon. So please go ahead and ask any questions related to health, wellness, weight loss, nutrition, personal questions for me. It doesn't matter. I'm an open book. If you have any video ideas that, that you'd like to see, please comment below and I will do my best to produce that content for you. I do upload weekly right now, so come back and check. Please, please subscribe to this channel. Subscribing really is where the support does come from, and I highly appreciate each and every subscriber that comes along. Once I hit a thousand subscribers, I will be giving away a 100% individualized free personal program for you to reach your health, wellness, and weight loss goals. Don't miss that. That is a highly valued program sought after by many and has helped many reach their goals. If you would like notifications of each time I post a new video, please hit that little bell notification icon right down there as that will ensure that you get notified each time I upload. Please share this video and share this channel because the info on this channel can help anyone overcome more than 90% of any health, wellness, and body image challenge. And we we could all use that legit info for free. If you thought this video was helpful, entertaining, or informative at all, please give it a thumbs up down there for me as that really does help me know what kind of content to keep producing for you. And until next time, have super amounts of fun in your life. Have super amounts of fun applying some tools that you learned today to your own lifestyle so that you can reach your goals faster than you may have otherwise thought. And until next time, I'll see you then. Bye.